Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tiano, the last days of Mexico. I'm your host, Mr. Canada Lover, and we're talking about rehearsal of a crime today. Uh, Noregno Stong strained from the gas station's radio as local policeman Mateo Perez sighted up to the pale blue Chevy pickup. The truck had barely been sitting here for two days, and the annoyed owner of the place wanted it gone. Probably belongs to another gringo tourist drunk off his butt in one of the Ojinajas bars, thought Perez. Happened often enough in the border town, he peered in the cab looking for anything that might help the sky. Nothing. He peeled back the tarp covering the bed. About ten minutes later, he was on the phone with the federal judicial police. About two hours later, the PJF were at the truck snapping photos of the hall and pumping the gas station employees for info. About five hours later, they burst into the bar El Dorado and handcuffed convicted small-time smuggler Ernesto El Grillo Ibanez. The truck's keys were in his pocket and he was indeed drunk off his butt. Busted. So that's just looking pretty good. Drugs not bad. Um, so I've been playing with this off screen a little bit. Um, so I've got this up to 80, um, 50, and 35 after I looked it up. So basically you want to get 5 up here. And then when you have 5, you want to click this little lever. And then this could raise it all the way through. So I've actually done this all off screen um, since last time. So at least this is 80, which is pretty nice. Other than that, um, we're doing our base industries. So if you're doing this again, please go ahead. And construction perception. Or legacy will decrease. More loyalty. And increase GDP. Well, it's not bad. Uh, loyalty. Do we need more loyalty? We could use more loyalty from the industrialists. Which wouldn't be bad at all. Um, but we don't have to have it. We could de deprive imperialism. You get more construction and perception, which would be nice. Because I really don't want to lower our legacy. Um, because, well, that's what happens with it. But maybe de deprive imperialism. When you really think about it, what has foreign investment done for us that requires us to hang around like a beggar, hoping a new factory road will be generously placed into a cup by the kind sirs of the United States or the nice gentlemen of Japan? Some of our greatest strides in this nation have been because we decided to stand on our own two feet, throwing out the foreign uh, uh, idiots who mismanage our, elect our electric electrical sector and demanding that our automobiles be produced here in Mexico, just two prime examples of our preferred method of taking full control of our resources and laboring ourselves to achieve results. President Lopez Mateo's vision hasn't failed us yet. Becoming less reliant on imports so we can start working and making things ourselves only breeds success. So Mexico has no interest in the passive imperialism that allows foreign investment brings. Allowing it brings. Next time their investment comes calling, we won't even be answering the phone. Supposedly. Of course, we can do all this stuff up here too, like normal. Um, the brute or discreet charm. Uh, improve working conditions. Quality of life goes up. Eh. Anything else we care about really too much? Well, that would be pretty good. That's a lot more resources. Unemployed gets better too, which I do like. Uh, you get more unemployed with this this one. Uh, moderately active. Where is the unemployment rate? Unemployment. No. Yeah. It's looking better overall. Slightly rural. Ooh, about 47%, it's not too bad. That's pretty high for unemployment. Where are we at? Northwest. Boop. There you go. Uh, PJF Commander Sebastian Martinez surveyed the great room, trying to ignore the delicious smell of carne asada filling the air. On the other side of its heavy wooden door sat El Grillo, a pathetic whelp of a smuggler who just captured with enough opium to slow all of Dallas to a crawl. Or to make the career of an ambitious commander of federal police. All depend on how he just looked at it. The key to the latter would be getting the prisoner to squeal on the whole darn operation, putting the big fish in all his lieutenants behind bars for years and years, and he just had the men to do it. Roberto Velasquez sat, back at a 90 degree angle and shoulders squared, focused squarely on his commander's next move. His face was a mix of wrinkles and scars, and his hair had long, had long gone go and gray. He had killed before Cristeros and his eyes so that he could again. Jose Maria's young face, by contrast, was covered with his lunch. He dabbed his face lightly with a napkin, then returned, resumed his attack on the beef. His easy smile and rotund features said he was someone to trust to confide in, but every jab of the fork moved with absolute precision. Commander Martinez rested his hand on the door's handle. He was short on time. The governor wanted to break the news on the bus soon. If he didn't have his big wigs in hand by then, he, they had to go around for sure. And because he needed El Grillo to talk fast and talk eagerly, he said, Roberto pried out of him. Jose, see if he can come around to an arrangement. Hmm... Jose seems pretty good. Talk fast. Pride out of him. Oh, who do we want? 
Roberto. He, that he could again. Let's go with Jose and see what happens. If it doesn't go well, we'll go back. The church on the hill. Lying dormant for years, the old church on the hill is half a mile west of a uh, red and remote Oaxacan village is bustling with life and activity. Underneath their aged roofs bearing fading, heavenly depictions. Dozens of people talk, sleep, and eat. A just married couple embrace each other, crying next to the doorway as they console each other. An old widow, comforted by her dog, lies without expression on the front pew, uh, stroking the fur of the only thing of value that remains in her life. A few working class men converse with, while breaking bread, grumbling away while their wives do the same thing on the other side of the room. Children play a game of tag between the aisles despite the frustration of the parents seemingly oblivious to the situation. Between all of them, on the creaking wooden floorboards, dozens of foodstuffs, drinks, and sleeping bags, and belongings line the pews. Outside, dozens of farm animals tethered to the fence posts surround the place of worship, along with a mother, father, and daughter viewing their home being demolished from afar. Amidst the sons of animals, the distant hums of bulldozers, company cars, and the crashing of walls are heard. What do these men say, Dad? Why do we have to leave? Something about a decree concerning resources in the area, it seems. Uh, we were in the way of the mining company. He spits out an insult, guys. Given now that they just employed us, all this talk of social justice and progress. B.S. His wife reaches over for a hug, though cries out when a boulder reaches their ancestral home to rubble. Dios mio. If you can't do it, failure. Ooh. Uh, precious hours slipped away as a subordinate failed to learn anything from the use of smuggler. Commander Martinez had already fielded three calls from the higher-ups in the Federal Judicial Police. Want to know what they found out from the interrogation. On the next one, they'd be asking for his resignation. Fine, fine. He'd do it himself. Martina slammed the door behind him and stood staring at the smuggler for a moment. They called him El Grillo, but they had a face of a rat. The thing he'd drive across the border in a pickup with barely concealed or covered bags of opium glowered Martinez. Makes you think I want to cross the border. It's for personal consumption, replied El Grillo, laying a much injected arm upon the table, his grin revealed sharp and yellow teeth. And you personally are going to rot in the darkest, most putrid hole I can find, said Martinez, flicking the lights off. All went black. A moment passed in silence, then another. The commander lit a cigarette, then a single pinprick of her spite. I won't keep this a business matter, offered Martinez. It's your boss, I'm after. His boss, and the boss of the whole darn operation. Enough full of cells, and won't have room for a small fry like you. The tiny flame illuminated the outline of the criminal's face, but not his sunken eyes. A grillo laughed, a full, real laugh springing from his gut, echoing across the tight room. Pounding in Martinez's ears, the criminal leaned across the table, a strange creaking across his wooden chair, and whispered, Do you think you can take him? You won't even be you won't, you won't even be able to put anything on me. Uh-huh. And reform article one, two, three. I really don't want to do that one because it hurts our inflation and growth and we would get I really don't want to do that one but workers shall be entitled to a participation in the profits of enterprise so as says a subsection L of article 123 of our nation's constitution this extract is hardly new discoveries many Mexicans have com combed through our constitution since its writing in 1917 and article 123 is one of the most progressive parts of a document we are of course very proud of the curious thing is that, to our knowledge, a subsection is not enforced in any way and seemingly never has been. It's a baffling of state of affairs that some of our people have been denied their rights, but there's an opportunity here. By limiting this part of the article, if somewhat modestly, workers across the country will see a fair rise in their wages across the board in a move which is sure to be immensely popular, and to top it off, the unions will be appeased and be able to rest a bit easier for a while. Now, finally, the workers will have their due as was decreed all those many years ago. That obscure object. PJF Commander Martinez stumbled out of the interrogation room, shaken. What kind of petty criminal could pull like that? Could pull on him. That one was certainly wasn't a petty criminal at all. One that could not uh, just work for, but truly belonged to an organization. An organization that could make sure he never went to prison. Had they bought judges? Politicians? Seeing Roberto and Jose Maria's very wary stares, Martinez growled, no luck with them. Any new, anything new here? Also, I, it, I went back and chose the other decision. It was literally the exact same event that came out. So, A quick look to their static array of evidence. I told him probably not. With a grim expression on his grim visage, Roberto replied, local police are asking townsfolk if they know anything more, but I wouldn't. The phone ring cut him off. Probably the higher-ups calling to take them off every the ever colder case. Honestly, that might be a relief. Martinez jammed the receiver to his ear and barked Martinez speaking. Martinez, this is Arturo, commander with a federal security director. We heard about your case and wanted to offer you our leads. The DFS? Martinez is mine race. Elite, efficient, ruthless. Uh, there was a threat to national security. I was found out and then stomped out by the DFS. Their info would be rock solid. Of course, getting bailed out would be a bad look, but far better than failing alone, Martinez replied. We'll need to clear it with headquarters. Understood. I'll call back tomorrow a.m. As Martinez heard the line click, he gauged the other's reaction. Jose Maria's face was moving from shock to his trademark smile. Bets the cavalry on their way, thought Martinez. Roberto's scarred profile was unchanged with the untrained eye, but the commander saw his skepticism, probably wondering if this was all part of an interagency power play. Martinez wasn't sure what to feel yet, but he didn't know one thing. The DFS always gets what they're after. 
Um, so we're forming Article 1, 2, 3, like I said earlier. earlier. And then uh, Konasupo and Anak. But before we do that, I do want to talk about this. I really don't like this. Because we're doing this, and this resets every time um, we do and finish a focus. Now, completing a focus will also subtract three preparation from a random campaign, active or inactive. Allowing an active campaign's preparation to hit zero will deactivate it, forcing preparation to be built back up. Which is basically, it seems like it's impossible, because we kept choosing this one. I chose this one too. Um, and then it didn't give increase, it didn't increase our perception, so... I, this is this must be broken or something. I don't understand. So I don't know. This could be maybe explained just a little bit better, maybe in the future. I don't know. The desert do very do a very good job, but this is left just a little lacking at the time of this recording, at least in my opinion. But beginning in '61, the Mexican governor Lopez Mateos created the Cana Supo, a Compañía Nacional de Subsistencias Populares. They reliably feed the people of Mexico and keep prices low, particularly for those impoverished families who struggle to keep the food on the table. Conosupo has worked alongside another government program, ANAG, Aseguradora Nacional Agricola e Granadera, Ganadera, uh, Rojas, uh, which has ensured and protected the food supply from vulnerabilities. In totality, the two programs have significantly reduced malnourishment and food poverty within the country. Still, there's much that needs to be done, especially as Mexicans feel the full force of the Kabuki effect. The government has recognized this, and consensus has arisen from around the need to grant additional funding to these programs, and maybe cost but provide the support people need in these times, as well as bring people great returns in the future. After all, you can't work on an empty stomach. Um, Simon of the Desert, Simon. I do like doing these two as well. Mm. Nice. Commander Martinez turned the options over in his mind. Attempt to press on with the case alone, likely without success, or accept the assistance of the DFS, his block at PJF headquarters. Wouldn't want to share any credit, but they likely need the famed director's skills and info if they wanted to crack whatever shadowy group was moving truckloads of opium over the border. The door to the police station swung open, letting in the amiable local officer that started it all. Martinez looked at the first friendly smile seen for hours and asked, Do you have something, Perez? Found someone who does. A journalist who writes paper for Oyunaga and a few other towns around here. Simon's a bit of a cook, but he's got a good ear and knows everyone in the area. When I ran into him at the market, I told him about you folk arresting the smuggler, and he said he knows about the syndicate Agrilo is working with. When I was supposed to be on the canyon to get his uh, evidence in order, he said he could meet the first thing tomorrow morning if he want. Martinez found himself smiling along. This hack of Perez might not have the national reach or investigate or investigative chops of the DFS, but it probably kept closer tabs on the coming and goings of local crooks like Agrillo. He'd have to make the call, but future of the case was back in his hands. All right, all right. At long last, some options. So we get more farming productivity, which is what we want. Uh, productivity is where fifty percent. That's average. Eighty-five. Fifty. 44 is not good. That's really high, which is good. 30. They don't even help this part out yet. But less than 60% 60, 60 poverty. That's good. Say 1, 2, 3 to me. May 17th, 1964. Today I was able to get signed the reform article of 1, 2, 3 of the Mexican Constitution into effect, and it feels good. I haven't felt as happy signing a law in a very uh, long time. Ooh, hey, that looks better. Growth didn't hurt. Actually, too much, too. Nice. Thanks to this law, all companies will now operate under a profit sharing program so as to guarantee workers a share in the profits of the companies and establishments for which they work. I've been told by my economists that the mess amounts to nothing less than a 10 to 15% raise in salaries across the board. Needless to say, everyone is very happy in and out of the government. I don't think we would need to be so unified around a proposal ever again, but somehow we pulled it off, or perhaps that I should be. that I pulled it off? My family says I should be a lot more proud of myself than I'm giving off, and perhaps they're right. Yes, perhaps they are in the right. After all, this reform has finally entitled workers to the rights they were meant to receive in 1917, even if only modestly. I've at last started to fulfill one of the key promises of the old revolution, and so hopefully this might also do one more thing. Maybe the bad feelings from the strikes that I put down in 59 will begin to fade now. At least that's what I hope. Solidarity at the bottom of a glass. Any projects? On the outskirts of Puebla, a neighborhood tavern fills with a stream of untimely customers. The owner watches as each man escapes the sun, midday sun and sits in silence with a drink. The warm lights and dazzling decorations do nothing to brighten the dim atmosphere of the drinkers. The final man enters, one that the barkeep knows well. Alejandro, what are you doing here? It's lunchtime. It is not, should you not 
be it the Tianguis? Alejandro wordlessly took a seat at the bar and removed his wide-brimmed hat. Across his face was a large bruise colored red and purple. My god, Alejandro, what happened? They took everything, my friend. I gave them all the money I had in my stall, and they beat me anyways. How's the man supposed to make an honest living? The injured man. Uh, oh, look at all that lag. I uh, took a large gulp of freshly poured beer. These jackbooted soldiers and the cronies, they told me that there were a few regulations and new taxes. They had their orders, just the new laws, and I couldn't do anything. Don't you understand? It's not just me. It's the entire stock market thereafter. Said we were impeding the modernization of the economy, whatever that means. I understand you're a young man with long hair that appeared. We all understand you. You're not the first, and if the governor gets his way, it won't be the last. I've seen it all. Markets are being shut down, traveling merchants and taxi drivers are laden with brutal regulations, and doctors are having pay cuts, and the indigenous are pushed away. Anybody who does not fit neatly to the governor and his business pals' capital agenda is being ground into the dust. That's not stopping anytime soon unless we do something about it. The youth paid for his drink and left. And so every man walking to the bar equally dejected things had to change. But that, how have, they would have to wait. He had protested at the university. He knew the power of the state held. Only coalition that encompasses all of the Puebloan society could force the government to concede its tyranny. The revolution must be preserved. Great madcap. The forces of order in Chihuahua were experiencing their own particular brand of chaos. Bluster, cigarettes, spittle, and the delicious smell of Jose Maria's Elot filled the air as the federal judicial police and the locals continued their furious debate over who to trust. In between bites, Jose Maria would spell, uh, spout out more praise of the DFS. The professionals of ingenuity and dogged and ruthlessness had busted several crime groups and heads of several would-be extremists. He had no idea who this journalist was, um, but the PJF was man who assured he would lack the years of experience, equipment, and sheer talent that would allow them to crack open this mysterious drug smuggling ring. Perez would listen with growing frustration for a few phrases, then unleash a fierce fusillade in defense of the journalist and local honor. Simon that was a good man, he argued, and one who knew every inch of the border region. How could the DFS hope to match the contacts of someone who lived and worked here for decades? Roberto sat stone-faced, occasionally interjecting to oppose whoever was speaking. He clearly was skeptical of both parties, but when questioned about how they were to pursue without one of them, stammered and fumbled. Commander Martinez watched and smoked from the corner. Let them hash us out, burn off the straps of this basket case. In truth, they had already sent his recommendation to headquarters, and when they sent the inevitable approval, they get back to work. Recommended the DFS, the local journalist. Hmm. Which one do we want to do? If we get somewhere with this one, I'll stay with it, but if we don't get anywhere, I'll choose the other one. We're going to go to the local journalist for now. Remember us? Another fist slammed into Angel's abdomen, unleashing another barrage of pain and nausea into his core. The figures wore a darker mask, barely distinct against a cloak of conf conifers, blackened by the night. How long had it been now since he was dragged out the lonely Serrano path into the forest? Another fist, tell us who you work for, and you may live, called one of Angel's assailants. Screw you. Wrong answer. A foot slammed between his legs, sending Angel to his knees. He spat on the ground. How much time can you stay here, Kami? Armor's looking for you, and when they find you, they're st you're dead. Of course, the laughter rang around the trees. Oh no, are you going to send your big brother after us too? We don't have time for this. Alfonso, get the hammer. Okay, I'll talk. A bunch of guys pay me, mostly local landowners. Hernandez, Jimenez, others. And also some guys from the city, so I meet them in Madeira. I don't know their names. Alright, that's enough. The nearest village is a few hours walk from here, so you got quite the crawl ahead of you. I guess we just have to up there in a forgiven moon. Now, Alfonso, kindly smashes the screwers' knees in. But I told you what you wanted, and I say you may live. Emphasis on May. The bush war, eh? Yeah, we get like no political part too. Um, check in on the 11-year plan. In 1959, President Mo Lopez Mateos and his government set on an ambitious 11-year plan to drastically improve Mexico's education system and ensure widespread access to education amongst the white populace. Uh, compromise various measures, including free textbooks, free lunches, the construction of new schools, particularly in remote areas, expanding the number of teachers and increasing their pay. His measures of successful would radically change the composition of Mexico's workforce and help with the country's modernization. The pen is on its fourth year, and the president wants to see its fruits. Statistics only paint part of the picture. Books can, after all, be cooked. Lopez Mateos wishes to see and visit these schools to witness a change for himself, determine whether the policy is working correctly, and make changes if necessary. Um, a pure nationalism. So we lower American influence, which is not great, but whatever. More legacy is nice. Worker loyalty, DFS loyalty. Do we need a worker and DFS loyalty? Come on, game. Come on. Yep. Worker loyalty. Yeah, I mean, we could use it. We don't really need more DFS loyalty, but whatever. If we went this route, that might have been better. But whatever. It's fine. Betray one's own country to foreign interests is the greatest crime of all. A willing admit is that you are too incapable to truly lead your nation and make the decisions that benefit your people. It is a mark of weakness, one that Lopez Mateos 
has avoided entirely by showing the nation of the world they can bring a positive change without selling off Mexico in the process. Many of our previously dilapidated sectors have improved significantly, and people are able to conform to a higher standard of living in turn. He has now made enemies of the foreigners, however, promoting a peaceful non-alignment, aiming to make the entire world one without conflict, and make even, ta even taking bold steps against nuclear arms. Be it a homer abroad, Lopez Mateos wants everyone to know the ideals he feels so deeply about. The new order of the post-war world is not some fixed dystopia where we are all waiting for some sort of Damocles to fall and cleave us in twain. A better life is possible, and we can all hope for that. Become more centralized. Um, this is all nice. It doesn't seem like we need to take this one immediately, though. The be beauty of day. And that's all the information I have, as said Simon, his stubbled face scanning the room anxiously. It was a start, thought Martinez. It's been fairly clever the journalists to keep track of the new vehicles, a particular pair of U.S. border guards have brought in the past few months, and I figured out that El Grillo only ever seemed to cross during their shifts. Interestingly certain, but all the PJ up would make them talk without a major diplomatic incident was to be determined. Maybe that DFS agent from earlier would know. Uh, couldn't hurt to keep him in the loop. There may be someone else who could tell you a lot more, Simon said, dropping conspiratorially. I think I found the man who coordinates between the small fire like El Grillo and the higher-ups in the syndicate. He would agree to meet with me at noon, but tomorrow to pass the canyon, away from prying eyes. You think or you know? Uh, asked Martinez, ever more tired of the wild goose chases. As a, devout, a devotee of the truth, I think I can say with confidence that I'll know tomorrow. A backup would be appreciated, by the way. I'm that much safer in case he's out to silence me. Martinez sighed. What was he going to spend it seems precious time protecting this paranoiac, or figure out how to interrogate these gringos? Well, after your meeting, we need to talk to the guards first. Talk to the guards first. So we can try it again, maybe. Oh my gosh. Silent records. Hector paced up and down, wielding his megaphone. The audience of local peasants have stopped working. The callous is evidence on their dark faces and gritty palms. The crowds up in one of the Egido's sheds for an important announcement. Some sitting, some standing, some with blades of grass in their mouth, and some other wiping beads to sweat out their wrinkled brows. Hector lowered the megaphone to clear his throat and then lifted his starts speaking to the indigenous farmers in Nahuatl. Friends, the central government has authorized increased funding for a ANAG, but what does this mean for you? By the look of their faces, Hector realized most of them probably don't even know what an ANAG was. He continued, in the case of crop failures such as a blight, maximum insurance payments will be doubled. Hector indulged in a grin as contented murmurs sounded over the crowd, which grew terse and near indignant once he mentioned that the forms were being more complex to compete with new checks and criteria. One farmer spat over his shoulder and scowled. You need to worry, my friends, please. The CNC will be able to handle this, all this for you, with only a minimal fee for assistance. Satisfy this member's return. Benito Pacheco Mora. Pacheco stood flanked by Hector with papers clasping in his hand. Hector's assistant took a moment to try and decide for what his boss was saying, only then realizing that this was a one giant kickback. The guy policy wasn't even going to cut him in, and it would be one covering his butt. Benito seized as Hector shook hands in the crowd, all smiles. Mechanization and professionalization. Infrastructure and redistribution. Get a little bit more political power, sweetener. Infrastructure construction speed. Or just construction speed. Or infrastructure and construction speed. Uh, if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. I want mechanization and professionalization. To say that our agriculture sector is in a sorry state is probably to downplay the problem. We have a crippling lack of modern equipment, modern methods aren't as luxury we enjoy, and worse still is that we have a critical lack of people trained as agricultural engineers who can actively dis diagnose and solve our issues. It seems as though we're stuck in a loop where modern agriculture is barely a dream. We can't allow that to stand for any longer, though. Training new engineers, procuring modern equipment, and we will need to grab the issue by the horns and do what we need to do in order to get back on our feet. We can't forget that the Green Revolution was born in Mexico, so there's no reason we can't get on top of this issue and try to begin to treat farming as a modern industry that it is. I guess we've already cooked our way out of this, so... Um, rally of rallies. The Institutional Revolutionary Party required a rally, and it got a series of conferences, speeches, and parades to put New York ticker tape parades to shame. Tireless labor on the part of the PRI electoral machines and corporations, the better to ensure the success of their patrons' bidding, saw thousands of crowds in the squares and streets across the state of Mexico. The presidential candidate was busy with the busy of state, or business of state, but his chosen band of agitators stood ready to press his case on his behalf. And they cried out, under the leadership of the next president, by prudent management, the economy of the nation will be preserved so as to ensure that our common prosperity survives in the face of all the threat that threatens it. Loud cheers. The United Mexican States will maintain a steady hand, ensuring that governance is not destabilized by the impulses of a foolish few. Cheers. And the party of the institutional revolution shall be preserved, defending the legacy of the revolution in 1910. The building shook with enthusiasm of the party militants. Long live the revolution, long live Mexico. Still looking at too bad death in the river. 
The Rio Grande was an unhurried river at steady flow weaving through the desert. To the north, a small town of Oyanaga. It passed a bunch of nondescript scrubland marked only by weather beaten Chevy and its lanky owner. Simon was a hurried man, his gaze flicking frantically between the scour all of notes and questions covering his notepad, and the dirt to his dirt road to the south. The journal's mouth alternated between cursing the PJ for not accompanying him here and himself for coming alone. Why was the source so darn late? Why had a gray van traveled back and forth and again on what should have been an empty road to nowhere? As his eyes made another flick, they caught a cloud of dust appearing in the distance. The glare of the sun made it hard to make out of the vehicle, but it seemed to be slowing down. Not wanting to take any chances, Simon reached in his pocket for his keys. Nobody knew this area like he did, and if this wasn't in his informant, he knew how to make a getaway. The crack of a gun and bullet through his chest ended that plan before it began. His body crumpled against the door of his car before sliding down onto the ground. Gas would wreck his frame over the coming hours as his life ebbed away alone. The blood seeping from his wounds would add a familiar river to Chihuahua's rocky soil. The River Styx was an unhurried river. Oh boy. General Christmas, a pedagogy of the impoverished. Waking up uh, the final steps, oh, walking up the final steps to reach the school entrance, a sweat developed on Lopez Mateos's forehead. The regular layout and tight streets of Guan, Guanajuato, uh, Guanajuato made travel by car a hindrance rather than a convenience, forcing the president to visit on foot. Snatching a bottle of water from an aide, he gulped it all whilst recomposing himself in the shade. Finally, ready, Lopez Mateos walked into the school to greet the headmaster. The headmaster guided Lopez Mateos through the newly renovated school building. The elderly gentleman was anxious. He could handle inspector visits to these, but accompanying the present was a level of pressure that was unprecedented to him. Desperate to give the best impression, he led Lopez Mateos to his star classroom. He opened the door, and every student immediately turned uh, towards them. Here, Your Excellency, is one of the most distinguished classes. These students, I am sure, are destined for high places thanks to all of your support, the headmaster said, beaming with pride. Uh, Lopez slowly approached the desk of a student. What caught his eye was a textbook the young boy was reading, History of the Mexican Revolution. Picking up the book, the president flicked through its pages. Rubbing this crisp, clean at pages between his fingers, it then occurred to him, this book is completely brand new, not a single torn page or scribble. Lopez Mateos is taken aback. This is nothing like his youth studying in Mexico City. The president continued his tour of schools, but no matter where, whether it was Yalisco, Sonora, or Nayarit, it was clear as day that every school had been transformed since the National Committee of Free Textbooks was established. A quiet pride filled Lopez Mateos that already his policies had altered the lives of the poorest for the better, planting trees for future shade. What is this? Decision zero. A light in the dark. Previous our electrical sector was under the care of private foreign businesses who, quite frankly, did not have Mexico's best interests at heart. Much of the country still lies in the darkness um, because of the dawdling and other chain holding us back from becoming a more modern nation. And it is uh, for that reason that we took control from them. To be able to put things right by our own hand, our new goal is to provide the power of electricity all across the country to help get the ball rolling in other modernization initiatives. Indeed, many modern amenities rely on electricity, and providing it to the people is just the first step on the road to them. If it takes a million power lines and a million workers to set them up, so be it. We won't rest till Mexico's power grid shines from end to end. Great. The fever rises. Oh boy. Commander Martinez was calling the DFS. He made the wrong call several times. Working with the journalist in over his head, not providing a backup when he went meant to meet the informant. Now Simon was dead and was making the right call at last. The agent from earlier, thorough was his name, spoke. I understand, Martinez. Frankly, this case is getting too hot. You and your men need to stand down before anything, anyone else gets killed. Move this case to national security, bring the resources needed to crack open the syndicate. Martinez was a proud man. Uh, one, not to turn over cases. But he was also a lawman, and he knew that the case was no longer his to solve. His best was filled with lead. Those two corrupt U.S. border guards that had seemed so important, so important that he'd sent Simon to his death, while well, they just skipped town. He had no way to find them in the vast expense of El Norte. In addition to his working relationship with the local police, was shot. Upon learning of his friend's murder, Perez had launched into a long tired, but the PGF's failure didn't stop off. He was either scouring the same useless ground where the journalists had bled out, or drinking away his straws in the, one of Oyanaga's uh, bars. Martinez knew that for a fact that his subordinates were doing the latter. The commander pulled the receiver close to its mouth and paused for a moment. Then the words sprang forth, fine. Just catch those opium smuggling sons of guns and kick their teeth in for me. Arturo growled with disdain, don't act like it's your call, Martinez. So growth is okay, inflation's okay. Eh, and this guy just got a little slightly better. Slightly worse. And 58%, still not too shabby. Anything here? The 
see what happens first. The Peasants of Tomorrow. And it's gone. I mean, you literally can't do anything here. This is so dumb. I want us to improve, but, you know, it costs political power and just, it's a waste. The Peasants of Tomorrow. The Dark Royals of Augusto Gomez Villanueva seem to spill through the television set in the living room of Ramon Delgado. That aging Morelos patrician leaned forward in his armchair throne, good eye trained on the tales that would pepper the politician's prelude to the most important agricultural bill of the year. Hector Campuzano, fellow CNC official, stood by his side, tape recorded, rolling to catch every utterance. I'm honored to present this legislation to my colleagues in the Mexican people. Foray adjusted his microphone for a full effect. This bill marks the arrival of a new era of unity and collaboration across a great nation. The popular sector will educate our farmers in the latest managerial techniques. The equipment honed by the calloused hands of our workers' men like my father will be placed in the eager palms of our peasantry. And what under this new order will humble, uh, will the humble campesino give? But the Nueva paused, surveying both the palace of the Donocles and the television cameras. What is always given Mexico? What is always give Mexico its eternal, undying national spirit? A sacred bond to his vast and beautiful land. While well, taking his eye from the screen, Ramon said, Get that <clears throat> system of yours. Hector's eyebrow raised, Benito? Uh, oh, Ramon nodded. You're taking him to Mexico City to meet with Licenciado Villanueva. Buy well, him a suit that fits and tell him to put together some academic paper showing that Morelos needs uh, that agriculture equipment. You can do the talk and be sure to tell Villan Villanueva that the Morelos TNC is a staunch supporter. Consider an investment in our collective futures. Oh, we do that one too. And a thorn in her side. Five years, five years since the Cuban Revolution. Oh boy. Uh, set Pueblo at life. Five years of marches and bullets and arrests and still of the state seats. Two governors have come to Pueblo since the revolt began as outlaws of them both. Radicals who are left and right ply their words in the streets and everyday resistance to our administration grows bolder. We're going to sit idly by and watch as the state so close to the federal district is convulsed by violence. Governor Nava Castillo has displayed the same prowess in the political arena as he did as a captain of our Olympic polo team. He must be made aware that he has received his position for one reason. To strangle this mockery of a revolution in his crib. Oh, got milk? The outrage did not begin immediately. For months, a powder keg had been growing around Puebla. Governor Castillo and his associates' great industrialization program had forced the state into modernity. The breakneck nature of this transformation had not only left many citizens behind, but also angry citizens. The few that would eventually let the powder keg came from an unexpected place. On an unassuming day in a particularly busy legislative session, a law was passed by a supermajority of the state congress. Drafted by Castillo's administration and approved by the PRI, the law was ratified without much debate. The next day, the new pasteurization law was announced far from the front page of every local newspaper. The new law stipulated that all milk sold in the state must be pasteurized first. On the surface, it was a common sense law that guarantees the health and safety of milk drinkers. Understandably, it was the dairy farmers who discovered the problem first, some immediately, others after a couple days. The only plan in the state capable of pasteurizing a large quantity of milk is by the governor and his allies, word spread and outrage followed. It seemed that the whole milk industry left their farms and ranches to protest the new law. The local branch of Cardenas' Independent Peasant Confederation, the CCI, followed their comrades in solidarity. By a week's end, the milkmen and the allies filled the streets with hot, white, hot rage, all this over some spoilt milk. Stand up in the English Channel. Ooh, just in case, maybe we'll save. I don't want things to explode too much. Can we actually get rid of the Mexican military at this point? I mean, I don't think we're going to back to war or anything like that. Could be wrong. Hey, it's looking slightly better. Hey, better growth. I like that. Dead GP ratio. Therefore, crisis. Abdullah had never flown before, and now she wasn't sure she ever would. It all seems so simple this summer. A travel agent arranged a vacation that would be the envy of every woman in Jalisco. A quick jaunt up to the beaches and thermal baths in Nayarit. I'll stop in Ciudad de Mexico to experience the art and culture of the capital and finally relax listening to Sun Yar Ocho in Veracruz. All connected by quick and convenient air travel. Sure, she read about some overcrowding of the country's airports, but who wouldn't want to go by plane when it was this affordable? Then the horrible stories began to trickle up. A woman's arm was broken as the crowd surged forward to the packed airport of Monterey. Shoddy wiring and hastily built control tower in San Luis Potosi had seen multiple flights circling for an hour before diverting to other airports. One had to make an emergency landing, and the fuel for lack of fuel. Two small planes had collided in Tuxla, killing all aboard. But nothing had sunk in quite like the news that a jetliner, landing on an undersized, out-of-date runway in Guadalajara, had simply continued on into the terminal. Multiple gates were damaged and many injured. The airport, the very one she had flown from and returned to, had been a death trap. They had shut it down, of course. Many others across Mexico suffered a similar fate, simply too hazardous to continue to operate. Good riddance, Abdullah thought. Had they left the ground, her dream of vacation would have quickly become a nightmare. Man was never meant to fly. Not good. The tremor. It was a bad in Puebla before. The shouts and those marching down the streets would go on from day to night. 
day, night to day, turning supper, lunch, and during prayer, doing much to fill the air with the slogans and whatnot. All those apparently not the worst of the passage of the pastoration at Cathrow. The AUP declared the support for the dairy farmers and now student movements have been do adding their own screams and souls to the streets. Protests essentially taking over the state as orders reduced to paper thin line. Then came the Cadenista CCI to draw up tens of thousands of protesters, summoning everyone in their ranks and bringing out each individual who hated Nala Castillo out of their homes. Even the neighboring city Tlaxcala joined in the madness as residents rose against their own pasteurization act. Society had essentially broken the hourglass of development, halting anything resembling it with clenched fists on high. The streets now crumbling under the weight of riders who tear the leftover facade of control and use it to burn a new fire revolt. Each and every single one of them united in one great march to repeal the law to the state congress. At the eleventh hour, the streets were reclaimed by peace and law. The march crushed and protesters dealt with. Unfortunately, the gust of wind that we thought would kill off the fires only served to make an inferno of epic proportions. The protesters were leaving emboldened as they set their sights on the next march. Each step, an earthquake. Each delay, another soul. Tomorrow, another crisis. Oh. His Excellency solved the Pueblo crisis. So, interesting. Can we actually fix this one first? Uh, yeah, we could. I have another Lightbringer. But we can always just, let, just go ahead and let it go first for now. So we okay, so we don't lose that. Um, huh. Admin? Ooh, loyalty go decreases. I don't like that. This is not too bad. There are those righteous few. In uh, violent times, we must take the allies we can get. Even if they oppose everything present materials and the revolution stand for. In point of blood and a portion amount of these United Mexican states, the PRI has found itself making common cause with the nation's reactionary right. Big business, conservative parental organizations, and the rightist student organization. While those them, they are quick to mobilize against the radical students and peasants filling their streets and fields, and they'll allow us to avoid staining your own hands with blood. We will swallow our pride in doses of painkillers and arrange super surreptitious connections to the Pueblo's far right. They will be assured a free hand and tacit support so long as their hate is directed against our enemies. A state's room in the National Palace, in front of Adolfo Lopez Mateos, there sat a map of the entire nation, and other more detailed maps of the neglected ruralities and cities of the United Mexican States. Leadership of the Commission Federal de Electricidad followed in through the door opposite the President. There was no preamble. The men knew what they were called in for. Without prompting, they sat down, and Lopez Mateos immediately led with a thesis. Gentlemen, with respect to electrical infrastructure, I want to make Yulinesco Kubishak seem like an agrarian reactionary when his efforts compared to ours. As the CFA bigwigs processed his intentions, a steady stream of aides began to come and go, and he drew out lines in red pen across the maps of Mexico. Oh, I'd like to do this again. Yeah, better unemployment? Screw it, we're just going to do that one anyways. Um... You seem to understand your duties, gentlemen. Good. We're going to make this nationalized electrical industry of ours useful. We'll build power plants and transmission lines in all directions. We'll make sure that the right parts of the country that the Yankees and Canadians didn't care about are long last covered, as is a right. The officials opposite the president, um, who many of whom had pan picked or a selection he had some vetted, nodded with gusto and sent to work themselves. The men left the National Palace and the power lines and plants went up. Yet, well before the work took effect, the poor of Mexico observed a new sort of poster in the streets they called home. Electricity now belongs to the Mexican people. It'll be treated as such, the bus is blared, but the poor, expecting no improvement, shrugged and moved on. The Che of Chihuahua and the announcing camp, fire camp light, Arturo Gamis marveled at what Salvatore Gaetan's column had become. Teacher soft hands had grown ridges of calluses, and those of peasants held rifles with the same familiarity they had once handled hose. A thick layer of dust was their uniform, their faces underneath, glad as they were to see the Grupo Popular Guerrero. Guerrero. Comrades, after months of fighting the Ibarra Cadillos, were composed of taut hard lines, the faces of revolutionaries. They were welcomed with all the fervor and festivities that the other GPG cells could muster. Backs ups and embraces, hearty helpings of hair, chiles, uh, chiles and beans, and plenty of bilky and tequila. After the first round of cheers and drinks, Arturo managed to pull Salvatore aside of a quiet, well less noisy corner, motioning to Pablo Gomez and his own brother, Jacobo, to join them under a mesquite. Arturo smiled as a teacher to a star people. First, I want to congratulate you. You have struck more blows for the working people of Chihuahua in several months than we than were dealt with in the past 30 years. Secondly, I want to ask for your recommendation. From a combat perspective, where should the next blow fall? Salvatore ripped off a chunk of tortilla, twiddling it between his forefinger and thumb before responding. We have the guerrillas now. And countless more would, would join us if they could. Don't have the guns to arm them, or enough ammo for even a tenth of Ibarra's guns. Sebadilla's police station is a place we can get both. He took a bite. Arturo took a deep breath. Our police will be set up from a bar step up from a borrow's typical scum, but if you couldn't trust his foremost commander, wasn't capable of Shea's boldness, you'll avoid a direct firefight, go in a night, Gaetan grinned. Next week's bounty of bullets and guns spoke for itself. Perception will get increased. Red, white, and green. 
The PRI is a vital legacy of the Mexican Revolution, a powerful and versatile instrument for us to ensure that the equality and peace its soldiers fought are our descendants to keep the decades to come. But in an emergency, we must put down the Swiss army knife and pick up the machete. The Byzantine nature of the PRI party politics and corporatism have prevented a rapid and effective response to the crisis in Puebla. Governor Castillo, a capable general, plans to militarize the state to forcefully end the unfolding chaos. While he will back him with the full resources of the Secretariat of National Defense and the Secretary of the Marine, despite Lopez Mateos' wretchedness, have betrayed the party and popular will he has spent a decade building. For strength is the only way to spare Puebla the years of vacillation and violence that afflicted Guerrero. Last watch. The balcony of Los Pinos usually offered Lopez Mateos a brief respite from his headaches, whether physical or political. Today, though, his hands gripped the balustrade as he watched a lone jet travel or traverse through the morning sky. Far too many of the planes lay lifeless on the ground, victims of the airport crisis. Far worse were the lifeless Mexicans, the photos of the crash in Tuxla. He breathed deeply, and with a dash of his old vigor, the president stepped back inside. He called a cabinet meeting, set up a new regulatory authority under communications and transportation and unified airport regulation, set a, a lighter real fire under Buchanan's butt to get him to streamline and step up enforcement. But as he barked orders uh, to set up a meeting, the painter turned with vengeance, no, his aching head said, let him do it. El Tabado, you don't have to this time, you don't have the energy, you can't even think. Lopez Mateos closed his eyes. What can he do with a ruck mine and one month left? Could mandate uh, safety inspections at each airport, hopefully to prevent another Tuxla, another Guadalajara, at least for a while. You're running out of time. Yes, we are. I needed a reminder. Green days. One, two, food drives pass through the area, each recipient thankful for something to eat. It was strange to see elites care for the peasantry, well, care being stretched when they made sure to drill into their heads who made the food that drives possible. None refused, however, it seemed as they were just indebted to the elites and politicians who drove by. A meal is a meal, especially to those in hunger. Three, four new programs for voters, uh, each offering an adequate amount of money alongside bread, flour, and other foodstuffs as a generous offer to voters who may otherwise stay at home. Unsurprisingly, the funded by section belonged to any number of candidates, from municipal to federal, or Daz Madrazo Salinas' names were the ones spread around feverishly at all times, whether it be by food, pesos, or gossip. <coughs> Five, six unbelievable stacks of pesos at the governor's office, all to ensure the Aguascalientes knew who would be the best for the state and the country as a whole. The men are arguing and debated while jo Jose Maria Morelos watched the two from his confirmed bill. He watched as the man finally shook hands and wept as he passed into another's hands once more. This was the nation he had freed, but it was no longer the ones he had liberated. Seven, eight more arrests. No one questioned the condition of the new prisoners. No one ever did. They can whimper quietly but unfairness to them. Once an officer passes by, they're reminded who sent them there with the injuries they have on their body already. The station is quiet once more, and the officer walks away to handle the other matters at hand. They don't know whether or not they can survive another beating like before, but they do not want to know. Nine, ten more days until Mexico's roads will be paved. See, we lost everything. I'm done with this. I'm so done. I'm not wasting any more uh, political power on that stuff. I have learned my lesson. Um, our clean hands. Ooh, quality of life goes down in the Gulf. But you give more bureaucrat loyalty. Which we don't need. As long as it doesn't go down, we'll be okay. Up here, Nationals and Meal. Um, I like the prison, though. But stability is nice. I need a reminder. While much of our attention has rightfully been captured by Pueblo, we must care, take care. Do not that other states fall into the same straits. Governors have been granted their vast powers to uphold stability, but many see their office only as a route to personal prestige and enrichment opportunities. Ooh. Uh, we'll hold them to account. Remind them of the utmost importance of security and public harmony during election season. Governor Dupre uh, Sinisteros will put down the workers' movement ra ravaging Durango, and Chihuahua's restive rural populace will be calm. The governor will allow another Pueblo or Guerrero. Or we will remind them, or will we remind them of our complete power over the rest of their careers? Up to dissolving the government and holding them criminally responsible for their failures. Nice. Ah, the tsunami. Diego Ortiz had never thought he could feel power, not on the level of the governors at the very least. But here he is, as they move forward with the strength of a tsunami, the movement hits against a flood of wall of the police station. Each time they are splashed forward, a call to release of political prisoners held inside its confines. The wall broke in an area, and the water of the bodies flooded in. Military squadrons forced them back, first a step, then a meter, then running a kilometer as the flood came back to shore. The batons hit those who weren't fast enough, those who were thrown back from the firepower of the hoses towards the Autonomous University of Puebla. There they would stay firm on the shoreline. Each room, each building, each section was fought for with a will of the righteousness. Diego hurled his right fist towards the officer. Contact, the baton from his pier hurtling down like the lightning, and boom! 
The fire trucks slowed up, becoming the true embodiment of their name as the sight of their carcasses halted the baton. A yell came from a different direction, non-students, as their stream splashed against a wave of officers. You could see the ball thrown by non-students, grenades as they wrecked havoc with each boom. In return, the officers ditched their batons and went for the weaponry, and in desperation, the tsunami crashed into the flood wall once more. <laughs> Encircled a pocket of officers retreated into the Carolina Administration Building, and fought just as the students did, but the wall finally crumbled at the full weight of the movement. Their prize, Colonel Dominguez, along with a handful of police officers, captured. Hundreds of his peers were arrested, dozens injured or killed, and they were pushed back from what a quick glimpse of the window told them. Now, from protesting, he was a hostage taker. Those in the building knew their duty and steeled themselves for their mission, stamping the CCI. Even though Osteo's cabin was shuffling away into the room, with few st with stacks of papers to call him when they gave the reports, Mateos felt almost a stranger to them. Most were already thinking into the next administration. He supposed he ought to start too. As soon as the whole of the cabin had taken their seats, Mateos looked to the Ordaz. You ever report on the CCI? Correct, Your Excellency. Ordaz shuffled a few papers before he began. Following our victory in the election, which has secured us another supermajority, the CCI's momentum is beginning to crash. There have been reports of infighting in the MLN, particularly those that were upset at the way that the CCI handled the election. Many were blaming General Cardenas' leadership for the loss. So would you conclude that they pose no threat, more threat to us? Mateos asked. I would not be so bold as to declare that, Your Excellency. Rather than simply watching and hoping they fall apart, I would suggest a more active approach. Mateos leaned back, a more active approach? Splinters are poised to form, but splinters can reform into a new threat. Now is the time to act. With the DFS, DFS, we should arrest key members. In the press, we'll say the operation is being carried out to secure Mexico from the influence of radicals on the left. We'll tell the Bolsheviks have infiltrated the MLM. In other words, we'll crush them while they're divided and weak, and we can label it a security measure. Mateos nodded along as he spoke. Clean and efficient, I like it. Give out the orders. It'll be done. Your Excellency. The deepening rod. What? Cardenia shouted before realizing what was, he was doing and lowered his voice. When are they going to announce their withdrawal? Tomorrow morning, they said, one of his secretaries. Tomas replied, it'll be circulated to all the major news outlets. Cardenia said to con consciously close his mouth, but instead of having his jaw hanging open in shock, his teeth were now clenched tight as he grinded them together. Yet he could never keep that sort of fire burning for long. He sighed and let himself fall back into his chair. Would you like me to get you something to drink, General? He shook his head and glanced up at his secretary. I'm fine, Tomas. Thank you. Yeah, he didn't feel fine. Another party had withdrawn from the movement. That made it, what, three in one week? At this rate, there wouldn't be, wouldn't be a party or movement come December. Well, their dad was poised to win the election. The PRI would continue to chug along unchallenged. That stagnant monstrosity which he had helped birth would further enrich itself on the backs of the Mexican people. Tomas, did we accomplish anything at all? The secretary wasted no time in replying. General, if you don't mind me saying what, we matter, what matters is that we try, because if you give up, then the Mexican people will too. That's something to hold on to, at least. Cardenas slowly nodded. him. The fight was not over, not until the last of them had given up on a better future. While Sir also gripped his heart, Cardenas gave a smile. I'll think I'll take that drink, Tomas. A heavy absence. Carrying a corpse, no matter how decorated it is on the outside, brings it with fleeting memories of a shattered pastime. Isidro Fabella was such a prolific man, able to accomplish so much in history while Lopez Mateos merely observed from the sideline. But now here he is, carrying Fabella's coffin on his shoulders, still with so many questions left unanswered. Do I owe my career to this man? Of course I do, Mateos thinks. Fabella was his mentor, a shining brilliance which gave Mateos his first glance in Mexican politics, the illegal avenues of politics, that is, with vigor. Fabella had earned himself various international and domestic political positions, once denouncing the moves of Germany. He left a legacy with a silent impact, his influence seen in many places, but perhaps no other person could idolize him, like Lopez Mateos did. Each step forward, uh, echoed by funeral music, pierces into Lopez Mateos' thoughts. He would like to think optimistically. Could he surpass his mentor? Or perhaps does the death of Isidro Fabella bring a colder meaning, all with Mateos' dream silently passing away? Indeed, it seemed like the latter. The world gets emptier and colder with each old friend and comrade that falls no matter how many new souls enter the political landscape. <clears throat> Isidro uh, Fabella was lowered into his grave, and Lopez Mateos thinks again, no longer respecting his fallen comrade, but selfishly. The world has surely grown cold. Uh, the number of allies seemed to dwindle and dwindle. Who is it among his current friends that would respect Lopez Mateos who dearly secure his coffin? Ooh, we got these two back. Nice. Is there truly anyone out there? <laughs> A humble ballad. Accompanied by a few photographers and reports, Ordaz and his wife quietly made their way towards a polling booth in central Mexico City uh, to cast a vote on the morning of July 3rd. Besides a subtle conversation with his wife, the statesman remains quiet during the traditional ballot cast by the presidential nominee candidate. His ballot, however, turns a few heads. What did you vote for, Secretary Ordaz? Uh, the young reporter's question gets on Ordaz's nerves a bit, although he decides to entertain the question. General Adrian Aguilera Benavides, sir. 
A quiet gasp was let up by the few photographers and reporters present as he smiles for a couple of pictures by the booth. Any reason why, sir? You're one of the candidates, after all. Why not vote for yourself? Benavides has been loyal to the revolution since before you were born. It's a trait that many in this country lack as of late, and my vote is the least I could do to reward such dedication. The flashes of the cameras drove out any other questions as a couple made their way back to the black sedan, driving back towards the capital. A vote of solidarity, not substance. Faith and blood, friends, Mexicans, children of God. Ignacio Gonzalez Golas took the podium to the fanfare jubilant cries. He allowed himself a moment to wallow in the ecstasy of adoration, albeit keeping a natural, neutral, resolute facade. As the men of the party and the brutes, Los Tecos, the OCLT, the chiefs among them, all hearkened upon the words of the supreme leader of the National Syndicalist Union. Golas uh, took another self indulgent appraisal before beckoning silence with his tight fists. Our nation is under siege, but from whom, I will tell you whom, the forces of Judeo-Bolshevism, the tyrants who are destroying the Christian church. They're destroying a traditional way of life. You need approval sounded out from the crowd. But what is to be done, I ask of this of you today? We must f follow the legacy of Salvador Abascal, who has done so much to oppose the actions of international finance. Of course, Golaz may seem like Salvador Ab Abascal Infante had died, but in truth, he was very much alive. He, in fact, could not be bothered to go to Golaz's crackpot rally. His supporters, none the wiser, wailed feverishly. We will restore the Catholic social order. We will restore this country one nation under God. The mo rally more or less tapered off after Golaz's uh, keynote speech, and a few days later, the local papers reported on the rally, noting modest attendance. A couple of the UNS cadres would wonder how many of them were police informants. The scene of fascism is not so easily rubbed. The man who can. With orders from both uh, Mateos and Ordaz, Undersecretary Echeverria has been sent out to deal with the AUP protests, which had quickly devolved into a glorified hostage situation for the Colonel Dominguez. The previous approach had failed miserably, so using the military was out of the question. I'll hope now rising Echeverria and the DFS to settle this matter efficiently, and with as few concessions as possible, and quickly for each day that passes causes the situation to deteriorate. With Ordaz giving his outspoken support, as President elect almost immediately after sending Echeverria out. It won't be long until it proves his hostage negotiation skills and brings back the colonel from the hand of riders. Dominguez cannot be allowed to die at any cost. You want to disappoint the president, right? Our hands clean? I like prisons. Well, owning them, not being in them. We preside over a mighty leviathan, one with several tentacles capable of crushing any malignants. Uh, the precise DFS, DFS, our loyal armed forces, and the massive federal judicial police all stand at the ready. But to smear a party with the gar of the fallen will tarnish Lopez Mateos. Uh, keep him from being a beacon of hope for the Mexican people. Someone else will need to bear that burden. The president does not need to know that we are using the crisis in Pueblo as a decentralized security apparatus, that we are playing private, paying private hitmen to take care of a rowdy students and farmers that stray out of line. That is our respectable army in training vicious paramilitaries. He does not want to know. The PRI wins the 1964 election. Who could have seen that one coming? Totally not us. It all come together. How could it not? The people have put their trust in Lopez Mateos for six years, and they were all riding the coattails of his prosperity. But now Ordaz, the future president of Mexico, come December 1st, will be the one to cement the 20th century as the Mexican century. Smoke from cigars, cigarettes, and more filled the room as the clangor of drinks heralded the final tally of votes from the radio. As Ordaz glanced around about the room, he spotted Mateos making his way over. Your Excellency, Ordaz said as soon as Mateos reached him, it appears that the Mexican people have once more put their faith in the party. Not just the party, Mateos corrected, they have also put your faith in you, just as I have. Whatever comes, I want you to know that you can always call. I've depended on you these past few years. It's the least I can do to repay your loyalty. I'll keep that in mind, Your Excellency, thank you. I was simply doing my duty. As Mateos made his way up, Ordaz smiled to himself. He'd done his duty all right. He had worked hard, suffered indignities and japes, and been insulted or ordered, or otherwise ignored for some shining star like Lopez Mateos, but now is his time to shine. The room was celebrating his victory as president. All his men would serve him for the next six years. And it would be his name that would occupy the first line of future textbooks just below the header, the Golden Age of Mexico. But before that could happen, they would have to fix issues ailing Mexico. Kickstart the second Mexican economic miracle. Root in the streets of hooligans and radicals. Cement Mexico's place in the fight against fascism. Yet all that could wait, tonight or does would celebrate, from poverty to the halls of power. The mass of the Leviathan inches inexorably forward. It's going to be hard to replace this guy. I mean, he's still a leader for now, and, and uh, or Daz will be leader on December 1st, but re replacing that 20% stability, daily political power, free production units, and better monthly poverty change? Yesterday evening at 8 o'clock, His Excellency Adolfo Lopez Mateos officially announced that the Institutional Revolutionary Party had won the 1964 election with 89% of the vote, turnout was high at 70%, and expected that the opposition will concede the election later that afternoon. Lesenciado Gustavo Diaz Ordaz Bolaños, 
The PRI's candidate for the presidency is expected to make a speech sometime today in which he will thank his supporters and reiterate the promises he has made on the campaign trail, showing a strong civic responsibility to the Mexican people. Congratulations have poured in from the country, most notably from the General Secretary of the Confederation of the Mexican Workers, Fidel Velasquez. The public now eagerly awaits the inauguration of the new president. A good day for Mexico and the democratic process. Nice. Hey, looking better. Not bad, not bad. It's all under control, which is great uh, for now. Vast is nice. It's not too bad. And intermediate, we are very close to getting good, so that helps out even a little more. Counterplay. It's been said that one should never allow a good crisis to go to waste, and few familiar with Luis Echeverria are surprised by his acting on such instinct. Quickly arriving in Puebla, the undersecretary wasted no time rallying counter protest groups alongside Governor Castillo, who spearheaded the public response along with the Board of Morality and the most of Puebla state government. Across the Puebla streets, far-right counter-protesters are taking to the streets, backed by conservative and business-friendly groups, and numerous reports of violent clashes taking place between them and their opposition among the striking workers and students. For now, the boots on the ground are various locals, but the movement is beginning to see support from the municipal government and the statewide PRI leadership. Caution is advised. While the counter-protesters may be helpful to us, they are ill-disciplined and the situation remains delicate. Public support is good, mob violence is not good. Not good. Let's hope Echeverria knows what he's doing. Our hands clean. Yeah. Because I do want more stability, which, I mean, we're at 53%, which is not great. Unwilling. A neutral structure sat on votes of hostage takers. The protesters still holding up the Carolina administration building, and in front of them sat the federal negotiator Echeverria. Their overall behavior, the water slightly sloshing in the cup from someone's bouncing leg under the table before trying to be subtle as they gulped down the con cup's contents, could only be described as cagey. Water's been cut off. One of the envoys spoke up after finishing his cup. There's been more government men coming through. We've seen them through the window, so don't even try to deny it. Relax, Echeverria strained himself in his chair. I promise that the federal government only wishes for the best interests of everyone involved in this situation. The three envoys didn't buy, you could tell. They too would resist too much to be effectively negotiated with, at least at this stage. He could maybe slip a few men into the movement, make itself tear apart, and gain leverage, or Echeverria could stall the negotiations, at least until the counter protesters could be assembled, both gaining leverage and ending the hostage situation if he pulled it off. The choice was his. Um, hmm. It doesn't seem like that would be really good infiltrate them like that, but doing it from the outside is extraordinarily dangerous. Break the resolve from the inside. I don't think that would be the smartest thing. I want to try this top one. I really do. Can't really negotiate with them. But I think this would be how we're going to go to the bot one, one for now. Oh, what else are we going to subsidize mechanization? A nation state. <laughs> the troubles situation in Puebla has called for troublesome measures, but the revolution's most potent arm is one we lightly bear the powerful ties between our parties and people. The PRI state apparatus has sunk into slumber given its complicated relationship with Governor Castillo. Presidential fiat will awake it, setting it into a, cavil a cavalcade of mass rallies that show the extent of our public support and the civilian nature of Puebla's government. Our opposition will be outlawed, or overawed, our silent supporters emboldened, and Poblano officials energized the government in the name of the people. The way of contempt. How contemptible these comments, good for nothing students, the traitors we were calling envoys were. How pleasant it would be just to go in with the DFS and army and show them the wages of treason. No, that would be folly that Chiveri knew. Were to do such a thing that PR, PR consequence of the resulting public bloodbath that would bring would outweigh any law and order benefit that it could bring about. Chiveri moved silently, pacing back and forth in his office as his mind rolled with possible strategies. If he, yes, that could tell him. If I saw negotiations long enough, that could be useful. Get further support for the government side of things. Get more of those kind of protesters to surround Carolina while our forces entrench and reinforce themselves. A smirk across his face. Yes, that would be very good, wouldn't it? Make these urgent drills, there's no way up, force them to give up. In turn, my own personal population and the state government's popular basis will survive. Perfect, really. No way this could go wrong. This is going to go very, very wrong. Oh, that's way worse. More growth, though. And it's got worse, too. Rabble rouse, and go on then, go with it. We've got a rabble rouse, don't we? Knives and weapons clatter on the ground of a change room command commandeered by the Mexican military. Civilian clothes were pulled out of suitcases and double bags, replaced with uniforms taken off and folded up military with military precision. The guy soldiers put away their weapons and were given blunt instruments. Some received brooms, others broken off pieces of wood, and few were given hammers. Whatever blunt object could be found was pressed into the hands of a soldier. Look at that. At least it's 90. Um, 
They did not board the usual military truck. Instead, they boarded taxis and cars and drove them as close to the counter protests outside the Carolina building as they could get. Ditching the usual military discipline, they lumbered up and charged into the counter protesters. Their mission was simple to create chaos, inciting violence, and create a riot to the best of their ability, make as much noise as possible. They riled up their fellows while provoking the students opposite of them to the best of their ability. As the sun lowered in the sky, violence increased. The soldiers were able to protect themselves. Meanwhile, protesters and counter protesters were less fortunate. It all played out as a plan and vision. Then things got worse black gold mines. Pemex headquarters in Mexico City could often be a quiet place. There was always many employees taking trips out of one oil field or another, leaving a skeleton crew to hold the fort. When the annual production reports came in, though, you could hardly walk ten steps without bumping into somebody. The CEO of Pemex sat at his, uh, sat at his office, tapping a small pencil against the side of his head and listening to the cacophony of ringing phones. This was the worst time of the year, not the production reports themselves, but presenting his own report to the president afterwards. He and his ministers would invariably demand another impossible increase in production for next year. As secretaries began to carry papers into his office, he took a moment to flick through a few pages. No, I figured he cut his eye. Sure, there's a missing decimal point there. 12% annual growth in the net operating profit. He grabbed the papers and took a closer look. It was true. The culprit assumed it was Hitachi. The computers the government had ordered and ported that year were making waves as the rigs, making possible a massive streamlining effort in the company's logistics department. The CEO hesitated for a few seconds before rushing to the phone and down the president's appointment secretary. Perhaps he might even be happy with this one. Federal Republic, that makes more sense to me. Help influential PRI members adjust to El Tabato, which will improve. More loyalty for the industrialists. Or a unified revolution. Seven days, seven days. The effects of sell to the, the Republic, or perception, sounds like, will improve. Become more centralized, more poverty. Or better poverty, basically. Add more to the depth, or whatever. Do you need more industrial support? Uh, or is that already at 94, which is actually pretty good. So, as much as I want a federal republic, it makes more sense to do a federal republic, in my opinion. But, a unified revolution. Mexican federalism is a legal and laughable fiction. The revolution provides a unifying ideal, and its part of the PRI unites its politicians in its common effort. Why, then, should we allow some states to fall further behind in their development, so in the instability we've seen in Puebla? President Lopez Mateos has promised to shift back to the centralized economic planning not seen since Lazaro Cardenas. To avoid wholesale disruption, this process would start relatively small, allocating development pesos to regions based on federally determined need, provide for our impoverished countrymen and no grasping governor a legion of corrupt states bureaucrats will stand in their way. I went with the right one, too, because people have gone right in everything else so far in the next imperative. God, I'm so tired. These hostages are such a handful to deal with, I tell you. And then these riots and protests outside. They're such a drain on me. The people that complained to the effect would usually have food shoved at them. Chin up, at least someone was able to smuggle us food and water. We won't starve. The original speaker would chew on the food and be safe, satisfied, or at least satiated, but would rarely feel any better. The move was somber, the negotiations were yielding nothing, and conclusion was at last reached. It's time then, the protesters said. Why don't the next demand is sent to Echeverria? Here's hoping it actually works, so they wrote. We're dissatisfied with the behavior of licenciado Luis Echeverria Alvarez. Whereas we have made every effort to constructively discuss the issues at hand with him, he constantly demands new permits and new consultations despite being in the upper echelons of the Institutional Revolutionary Party. We require new assurances. We therefore demand that the president or president-elect come to the campus and speak to us on national television. The letter was folded up and given to the usual couriers, and the protesters leaned back and tried to relax. Here's hoping to work, to work, that it works, but I think we want it there. We're seeing what else we can do. We've chosen Ordaz as the next president, and uh, yeah, we're going to go on from there. Help you. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my uh, Discord link in the description below, which at this point you probably have or not. And I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on with these United Mexican States with a new leader, maybe in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.